Brendan mentioned a couple episodes ago, we decided that we are going to start splitting these podcast episodes. So you are listening to the very first Cold Blast that we have. Cold Blast coming at you. Um, And in the Cold Blast episodes, we're going to talk, it's going to be very heavy tech talk. So this is going to be your specific questions, and we hope to give you some equally as specific answers. Uh, These episodes will be much shorter, and they're going to be pretty pointed. And the idea is that moving forward, if you have a particular tech question, you can look through our catalog and hopefully get your uh, answer pretty quickly. So without further ado, uh, we are joined today by our technical advisor, Lou Coomer. Welcome, Lou. Thanks for having me. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Hey, uh, we're hoping to make your job easier too, Lou. That's right. We're trying to put Lou in the back pocket of our uh, (laughs) customer techs out on the field here. So, uh, Lou, why don't you take a a minute to introduce yourself and kind of how you came to uh, work at Comfort Supply and and what you do for us now. Okay. Uh, So, I started out as, uh, I went to Triangle Tech as an honor grad there, worked in the field as an installer for a couple years. And then I moved on to service work and uh, did some service and sales throughout my career as well. So worked for a few big players, I'm not going to mention names, but uh, around the area. And then around 2013, this is actually my five-year anniversary, actually. Yeah, yes, it is. Around 2013, this position came open for a technical advisor for the Mitsubishi and American Standard product. So uh, the body was getting beat up out in the field, so decided <laughs> uh, to give it a go and... Uh, I've loved it. It's great. Uh, it's a great experience. It's. I'm still learning. Everybody's still, you know, it, one thing is when you're in this kind of field, I mean, there's always stuff to learn. There's always teaching to be to be done. Uh, it's just always a learning experience. New technology is constantly coming down yeah, the pike. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I thrive on that. I love that. It's a passion of mine to, to understand what makes something tick and to make something more efficient and more, you know, user-friendly, you know, whatever, uh, uh, the way the, the, the industry is progressing is just at a fast pace and the products that we sell, especially the Mitsubishi product is really advanced and, uh, it's great to be a part of it and be able to help our contractors, uh, you know, understand it and, and, and use it and sell it with confidence. So you're the exact awesome. opposite personality type of me because in my mind there's nothing more boring than reading over a technical manual or a how-to guide, uh, but that seems like it's your wheelhouse. So I always say if it wasn't for the for everybody not wanting to read a technical manual, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad to have you. So this will this will possibly be a replacement for some people reading technical manuals. Right. Yep. So, uh, so we started by asking Lou um, to give us a list of his most common tech calls what are the ones that people call for day in day out and the idea there was a little bit self-serving hopefully um, he can refer people to these episodes moving forward and then right. it'll be a resource for everybody listening um, that if you have a question you're able to pull up the episode fast forward rewind if you need to listen to something else so without further ado um, what are we talking about today Lou uh, today I thought we'd start with uh a Mitsubishi product, any of the Mitsubishi products in the M&P Mr. Slim uh, line, uh, they use a Pacific type of wiring, and the wiring uh, is actually kind of unique because it uses high voltage and also DC communicating voltage to uh, pass between the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. And when there's a communication error, uh, t- I get a lot of calls from techs like, hey, where do I start? You know. How do I know what's causing this communication error? So I have some pretty easy steps to to break it down pretty quickly, actually, to where you should be focusing your attention to when you get this type of error. All right, gotcha. walk us through. And, and where do you? Uh, yes, yeah, so I guess to, to start, Lou. How do how do we know when we've got that communication error? Yeah, so when we got a communication error, the customer is going to call the probably an installing contractor or a servicing contractor and say the indoor unit. Uh, on the right hand side has a, a green light that's usually solid and they're noticing that it's flashing all the time mm-hmm. and of course they're not getting any cooling or heating out of the unit and it's just kind of sitting there doing nothing and they the, but the, yeah it's a constant flash on the green light and that's how it all starts tech goes out and then usually calls me gotcha and then uh, so where's the is the first step just diving right into that indoor unit or, or are we going to the outdoor unit where, where does that tech want to start no, we're going to actually start. So first, I'm going to make them understand where does this voltage come from. So first of all, the outdoor unit, 
uh, is what provides your high voltage and your low voltage uh, communicating voltage. So n the indoor unit is actually just receiving that. Right. Now there's a communication going back and forth where they're talking, but all that all that is provided by the outdoor unit. So first thing I'm going to do is have the guy go out to the outdoor unit and just simply take a reading. So we have three three uh, wires going between a Mitsubishi system, and they're marked S1, S2, S3. So S1 and S2 are typical 208, 230 high voltage. Okay. Now the unique part of what Mitsubishi does is they use S2 and S3 for their DC communication. Is so we're actually sharing the S2 leg with high voltage and DC voltage. Gotcha. So it's it's kind of cool. And does that does it, can that um, does that pose a a little bit of a unique situation for guys that aren't maybe used to uh, using the Mitsubishi product? Is that something different that's yes, unique to Mitsubishi? it is different uh, because, I mean, they're usually looking for high voltage. They really mm -hmm. don't know uh, which which wires are high voltage, which wires are low voltage. So I'll get a lot of guys calling and giving me readings. They're on the, on, on the wrong scale on their meter to gotcha. be to check gotcha. the voltage. So once they get out there, I'm gonna want them to, I want them to know what's happening with S. Well, let's just step back. First thing you should do would be to actually reset the unit, and this is assuming that this is done already. Reset the unit for five minutes, which means powering the outdoor down and then powering it up. Okay. If the code doesn't go away, which more than likely it won't, uh, if there's a you know there is a problem, then I'm going to have the guy take his meter, put it on DC scale, and I'm going to have him check S2 and S3. Okay. Now a healthy operating system that has good communication. It's not going to be a solid voltage. It's going to be a fluctuating voltage. So it's going to go from 12 volts DC up to 24 volts, and it's going to fluctuate everywhere in between. So it's going to be constantly a moving voltage, but in that range. So obviously, since we got the one flash, that's not going to be happening. So what I'm going to want to know is what that voltage is. So typically, if we have a short in the wire or the indoor unit, we are going to have a reading on S2, S3 of roughly they'll like say it reads 0.8 or one volt or two volts pretty and low though yeah pretty low yeah so i'm mean, at that point say okay so let's uh power down always be safe with working with high voltage mm -hmm. and low voltage uh and dc voltage and, and so forth and i'm going to have them disconnect s2 and s3 from the outdoor unit okay and what uh, is that doing for them that's going to eliminate the indoor, the wiring and the indoor unit out of the so equation. So you're just testing whether or not the outdoor is talking to the indoor. Yeah, we're, so we're testing to see if the outdoor has the, the voltage that we need to be able to talk to gotcha. the outdoor unit. Gotcha, gotcha. So that, like, that's produced on our outdoor PC board. So right now I want to know is do we have the voltage at mm -hmm. all. So I want to eliminate everything to do with anything with the outdoor unit. So this is basically the outdoor unit with no wires connecting to the indoor unit whatsoever. And uh, you could leave the S1 on there. You could take it. It doesn't matter, either or. So then I'm going to have them take the reading there. Now, if I read 24 volts DC, that's what the voltage should read, not fluctuating, because remember, that's only when we're mm -hmm. communicating. Mm -hmm. If I'm reading 24 volts DC, we could forget about the outdoor unit. It's fine. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And then we could focus on the indoor unit or the wire. So right there, right off the bat, one reading, we're eliminating half the system. Right. So. Right. So at that point, if we do get the 24 volts, I'm going to do two scenarios. If we do get the 24 volts, we're going to get, we're going to then power down, disconnect S2 and S3 from the indoor unit, and then go back out and reconnect S2 and S3 on the outdoor unit. Okay. So once the outdoor unit, we make those wiring corrections, we're going to power it back up, and now we're going to go to the indoor unit the wire, but the S2, S3 wires that lead to the indoor unit. We're going to take a voltage reading there. Now that reading should read 24 volts. Okay. If it reads 24 volts DC, so the wire in the outdoor unit is totally fine. So now we're talking about a part in the indoor unit. Gotcha. Which would be the PC power board. Okay. If we don't have the voltage, like say we start, they say, hey, Lou, I'm reading that point eight again. Mm -hmm. uh, then we got a, we got a, uh, a problem with the wire. Okay. Most common problem with the wire is it's shorted somewhere, and the most common short, and I get a lot, I mean, five years of experience taking these calls, one of the mo most common things that happens is 
Well, one a, one of the strands of the wire is touching something ground, okay. like something on the chassis. The other big one is when they install them, they use what's called you know they use Romex connectors to, that are required mm -hmm. by local code to secure the wire to the to the units. They tighten them down too tight, and they actually end up squeezing the wire to the point that it shorts out. Oh, jeez, I mean. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. Wow. So at that point, we're going to figure out what's wrong with the wire, and then we're going to either, if it's possible to fix it, we're going to fix it. If it's not possible, we're going to replace the wire. Replace the wire. Right. And now the second scenario, say we had the 24 volts, then we got a problem in the indoor unit, and then I would be telling you to change the PC power board that's in the indoor unit. Uh, because that's the only other place a short could occur in that circuit. Gotcha. So when um, the so the main the main first the main the main things for this is is really identifying that S one S two S three exactly. and then and then isolating those lines to identify whether or not that voltage is passing from yes. the outdoor to it's the indoor. It's all an isolation process to isolate the. So you have three components basically involved. Even though a wire isn't like a piece of equipment, it is the component in this sure. this transaction of power. So yeah, we want to ice. We want to isolate the difference between what the outdoor is doing, the wire, and what part the uh, indoor is playing with this problem. Right, and it's um, going to be one of primarily three things: that what either a wire replacement, a wire fix, or a PC board right. on the indoor. Right. So, but remember, I said there was another scenario. So, say we didn't get the voltage on S two S three at the outdoor unit. If we don't get the voltage on S two S three on the outdoor unit, we have a bad. Uh, on a small M series unit, you're going to have it's all one board. You can't okay. replace all the boards together. Uh, you'll replace uh, the outdoor board because gotcha. that's what's responsible for the wire. Now, if it's a P series unit, which is a professional series, uh, bigger units, more commercial style unit, then we got to dig into the outdoor unit a little bit more to decide where that's coming from. I think it's. Uh, uh super mindful for for the contractors out there to uh, be able to diagnose and, and deduce this and and be able to to call us and say i need a pc board or, or i need a, right. a wire for s2 as opposed to uh you know potentially having to to walk through all of these steps uh, i think this was was a huge uh helping tip for the mitsubishi troubleshooters out there right and on what you just said though uh the wire is also important, so if it's a new install, make sure you use the proper wire, and right. that is going to be for an M-Series Unit 14.3 with ground. Perfect. Thanks, Lou. Thank you. Thank you.